and Sunday afternoon. Compassion International and Museum of the Bible present Casting Crowns, the very next thing tour. One step away from surrender, one step away from coming home. With special guest Danny Gokey. There's a hope in front of me. Tell your heart to beat again. And unspoken. Start a fire in my soul. Join Casting Crowns for the Very Next Thing Tour. Performing songs from their latest album, The Very Next Thing. As well as all your favorite Casting Crowns hits. Casting Crowns, the very next thing tour with Danny Gokey and Unspoken. It's an evening you won't want to miss. Get your tickets now to see Casting Crowns, Danny Gokey and Unspoken at the SIU Arena on Good Friday, April 14th. Tickets are on sale now and buy them on our website at wvyn.org. Ninety point nine, The Vine, in conjunction with AreaSports.net, proudly presents the Sports Couch. The Sports Couch is the area's only locally produced weekly sports show that is live on FM radio and also streamed live on both of our websites at AreaSports.net and WBYN.org. We will be on the couch this morning. Let's find out. The Sports Couch is on the air right now. And good morning again, sports fans. It is 8.30 on a Saturday morning. Time for 90 minutes of great local sports talk. We call it the Sports Couch. I'm Randy Olson live in studio along with Danny Anselman. And uh, Danny, a lot of good basketball games around the area last night. And, uh, boy, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. We're at the end of January. People are really starting to look ahead to postseason and Things are really taking shape on how things may uh, play out. Yeah, Randy, uh, you know, uh, the seedings were set for the girls' regional this week. It's going to start on February 6th, mm -hmm. and uh, here we are here on the 28th of January. That just tells you how close things are. That's exactly right. And, of course, uh, grade school, the junior high action, is really picked up as we had one state championship in SIJHSAA play in girls decided last night in Class M basketball. They'll uh, conclude the S and the L today in the girls. And then the boys are finishing up their regionals. And I got to see the championship game of a great regional last night between Woodlawn and Field, which was played at the uh, New Mount Vernon High School gym. And a shame that both those teams had to play each other in a regional because they've both had outstanding seasons. Yeah, Randy, those teams uh, saw them play early in the season up at Rome. Uh, knew they were both going to make a run toward that postseason deal. And like you said, it's just a shame those two teams met up last night. And as predicted, uh, well, maybe not predicted, but as uh, not totally unexpected, a game did go into overtime last night, which is probably about what you'd want for a, a game between two good teams like that. And uh, Woodlawn was able to win it 44-39. to We will talk to Coach Jeff Burkett of the Woodlawn Warriors this morning on the show. I think Woodlawn uh, beat field two to one in the series. I think it was one to one heading into right. last night. Yeah, it was. Last night was a rubber game, and it was a, <coughs> a big crowd last night and a, and a great contest. So we'll talk to Jeff about that coming up in the show. Also, this morning we're going to talk to Coach Scott McElravey of the Fairfield Mules. They got a big win last night over Johnson City. Yeah, you know the Mules looked like they might have put it back together a little bit last night. They struggled earlier in the week, so uh, I'm sure he was ready for a nice rebound victory. We'll also talk to Coach Brian Gamber of the Woodlawn Cardinals. Woodlawn won the championship of the Midland Trail Conference Tournament last Saturday with a dramatic win over Waltonville in the closing seconds. And then they uh, they stumbled a little bit, almost stubbed their toe this week against Grayville, but were able to finally pull it out at home. And we'll talk to Brian about how the season's been going, about that uh, conference championship, and about the schedule looking ahead. We'll have him on the show this morning. Also, a big game last night between Edwards County and Wayne City which was won by Edwards County. Russ Gerlach, the coach of the Lions, will join us on the show. Of course, Gerlach used to coach at Wayne City, and both teams have an outstanding season. That would have been a great game to see last night, Danny. Yeah, you know, it wound up a six-point game. Uh, I'm sure uh, there was a big crowd there, and uh, a lot of things went on probably last night. We will talk to Coach Gerlach about that. Also going to visit with Coach Phil Lee of the Florida Wolves. They got a win last night over Paris in the Little Line Eye Conference. 
And so now after uh, struggling early in the season, the Wolves starting to put some wins together. They're playing much better basketball. So we'll talk to Phil this morning about that. The Lady Wolves of Florida is ranked number three in that sectional complex in girls basketball. They'll be headed up to T-Town where they will face the five seed. And I can't pull it off the top of my head. T-Town's one, Newton's two, and Lawrenceville's three. Okay. Maybe it would be, would it be maybe St. Anthony or um, Altamont or? No. Okay. I don't remember. Let's look that up and see. Mount, okay. Car- Mount Carmel is uh, the number six seed. The Foxes mm-hmm. are seventh. Uh, Carmel White County is the eighth. Fairfield is the fourth seed. They'll be hosting okay. the other half of that. All right. Also on the show, we'll have Josh Bradley, head coach of the El Dorado Eagles. Uh, what a close game last night, though, between the Eagles and your Foxes, as uh, El Dorado was able to overcome and hold off uh, Hamilton County, but a really game closer game than what most people thought it would be, probably. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, El Dorado's 23-2 uh, and two now on the season. Their only two losses are to two 3A schools. And uh, they come into Hamilton County last night, had a big crowd. Uh, it was a four-point game. Uh, matter of fact, it was even down to a two-point game late. Foxes miss a shot, El Dorado hit. Foxes miss a shot, El Dorado hits. Foxes miss a shot, and El Dorado makes one out of two free throws to give you your victory there. Was uh, some of the El Dorado players in foul trouble last night? No. No. No, uh, you know, neither team, uh, and nobody really held the basketball, Randy. Both teams were very patient, mm-hmm. worked it around. El Dorado shot poorly from the free throw line. The Hmm. first half, they were one out of 12 from the free throw line, and those opportunities allowed the Foxes Hmm. to stay in the game. Okay, well, we will talk to Coach Bradley about that then coming up. We were hoping to talk to Coach Varner this morning, too, from Hamilton County to get the Foxes' perspective on it, but we understand he's busy uh, refereeing some basketball games this morning, so he won't be able to be with us. They got their uh, grade school program going now. Him and Clint Weinmiller are both Hmm. kind of tied up with that right at the moment, and uh, I think they're playing a lot of games between 9 and 10 this morning, and both those guys are having to officiate games. Yeah, yeah so. we understand. All right, well, we'll catch them another time. But uh, if you want to run through some of the scores from last night, Danny, I will get our first guest on the line. All right, from the Black Diamond, like we said, El Dorado defeated Hamilton County 41-33, to Fairfield over Johnson City 63-45, to Cesar Valier 74, Trico 51, Goreville 71, ZR 42, and a big win for Vianna. They keep leading that west side with a 56-51 victory over Christopher. From the south seven, Belleville Altoff 70, Carbondale 56, Cahokia 47, Mount Vernon 29, and Centralia goes to Marion and gets a big win last night, 58-42. From the river to river, Benton improves to 19-1 on the season with a 55-45 victory over Heron. Pinckneyville dismantles Sparta 74-24. Harrisburg with a 48-42 win over West Frankfort. Murfreesboro defeats Massac County 63-49. Nashville defeats AJ 61-43. Carterville 54, Ducoin 33. A big matchup tonight. The Benton Rangers travel down to Carterville, and that'll be an exciting game there because Ron Weinmiller and Shane Hawkins go back a long way, and be interesting just to go and see that game tonight, Randy. You think you will show up for that one? I'd say they'll have a few people there. Uh, I think they will, too. From the Midland Trail, Odin 83, Sandoval 49, Waltonville 83, Clay City 43. And from the Little Lion Eye Conference, Tourney Marshall wins it 68-54 over Robinson. Olney takes third place 59-58 over Lawrenceville. And Flora beats Paris for the Constellation Championship 70-65. And from the GEC, Gallatin County 74, NCOE 50, Crab Orchard 46, Galatia 43, and Thompson defeats Pope County 55-44 for seventh place. Well, that'll set up a championship game in the GEC tournament, as expected, between Gallatin County and Crab Orchard, and that'll be, what, the third time they've met this year, yeah. maybe, I think. Huh? Yeah, all right. Well, as you're running through the scores there, of course, you mentioned the Black Diamond scores. The Fairfield Mules, a winner last night over Johnston City by a score of 63-45. to 45. Pretty much led wire to wire, I believe. We've got Coach Scott McElravey, the Mules, on the phone with us right now. Good morning, Scott. Hey, good morning, guys. Great to have you on the show, and congratulations on the win last night. A big win for your Mules. It sounds like you played some really good basketball. Yeah, we got off to the lead, which uh, we haven't been doing here lately. And uh, anytime you can do that, you know, the kids feed off of it. We had... Uh, we played good defensively, moved the ball well, 
and um, got another conference win, which is very important. Yeah, it really is. And, of course, uh, you you had stumbled there for a few <laughs> weeks or a few games and, and kind of been right in the ship, and so it was good to have a, a wall-to-wall effort last night from the opening tip. huh? Yes, I mean, we've got two huge games this week against uh, cross-county rival Wayne City. He's got a very, very good team. And then uh, that sets up Friday night, 5-1 uh, and one, us, and then also El Dorado's also 5-1 and one in the conference. So we've got two big games so it was nice to get some momentum going into the next week. Those uh, games coming up with Wayne City and El Dorado, where will they be played at? Uh, we're at Wayne City Tuesday and then at home Friday versus the Eagles. All right. Yeah, those are uh, big games to, to look ahead to. So last night in your in your game against Johnson City, did you uh, how deep did you go as far as the players that, that played for you last night? Uh, we played uh, 10, 10 again. Mm-hmm. Um, Yep. Got right off to the it's a very good start. Macklin Snyder hit a couple threes for us. Uh, I think Brandon McGill had close to a double double. Um, Jaden Lewis also had double figures as well. So yeah, Kobe Dag had he came off the bench and gave us I think eleven points. So we got contributions from a lot of kids. Well, you're still the only team in the conference that's put a win uh, up against. Um... El Dorado, and of course that, that game's going to be coming up. I'm sure they're going to be looking for some revenge. As you look at the scores from around the conference last night, uh, a little surprised by the score between Hamilton County and El Dorado last night? Well, not really. The first time they played down at El Dorado, Hamco gave them a great game. You know, I think they're much improved this year. They're, they're uh, you know, Our last couple of weeks where we've led a lot of games and, and lost late, and Hamco's kind of had that happen to them as well. You know, they've, they've been in a lot of games this year and just haven't quite got him. I know that was a very close game down in El Dorado earlier this year, so uh, last night we were Fox's fans. It just didn't quite work out. Well, they they had their chances, Coach. It was... Uh, Did they? The ver- score was a low-scoring game. It was a very, very hard-fought close game all night. Uh, both teams were very patient on offense last night. Uh, El Dorado missed several free-throw opportunities, kind of allowed the Foxes to hang around. But late in the game, it was a two-point game, and the Foxes missed a shot, and El Dorado scored, and they missed again, and El Dorado scored, and then they had another good look and come up empty, and El Dorado got a couple free throws off that deal to make it a final. But the Foxes had the ball late in the fourth quarter and had a chance to take the lead. Yeah, that's that's really what you want. You know, uh, last week we led for most of the game against Harrisburg and got nipped at the end. Same thing against Mount Vernon, Indiana. Um, Carmine at home, we had a big big slip up there. I mean, Carmine's got a really nice team, but I think our stats showed us shooting five, for, five or four for 13 from inside six feet. So sometimes, you know, you can get good shots and they just don't fall. Well, and yeah, you, you know, and it seems like you see that more and more this year. Teams have struggled finishing in around the basket for some reason. Uh, it looks like the offenses are getting the shots they want, just can't get the ball in the hole. Well, I know with our conference, we've got a lot of good big guys. You know, when you look at El Dorado, El Dorado they've got tons of size. Um, you know, Everett County has, has good size as well. So uh, it does make it a little tougher to finish when you're looking at a 6'5 guy standing in front of you. But, I mean, our, I've said it before this year, our conference is, is much improved. There's some um, very good teams in it this year. Well, you know, you're right, Coach. Uh, you look at that El Dorado team. You beat the first 6'5 guy, and it's the next two that's coming from out of the shadows of the, are the guys that get you. They are, and their guards are big, too. You know, the Meredith kid's probably 6'3". You know, so they just got a ton of length, and those kids have played together for a while, so uh, there's there's a reason that they've got the record that they do. You know, uh, you you talk about having some bench players and stuff. They got Ray Maycombs. He led them. No, uh, Partridge ended up leading them in scoring last night with 13. May had 12 off the bench. But he's got those long arms. And uh, last night I noticed uh, if he wasn't hitting it with his arms, he was kicking it with his feet. That, that boy's very <laughs> active, you know. He had a big game. He's had – multiple big games when they won at Mount Carmel he came in and hit some shots you know so uh, he's a junior so he'll probably step into their lineup next year I know they only lose a couple couple senior kids so they're looking to have a really good team next year and you know uh, I think the Black Diamonds can be very well represented in the in the postseason this year well you know uh 
talk about your game coming up Tuesday night. This is a, kind of a county rival game coming up here. Uh, Wayne City's got a pretty good team there in 1A. They're thinking they can make some racket, and they'll be a challenge for your mules on Tuesday night. Oh, I think 1A, they, they've got a definite chance to win a regional for sure. Uh, they'll be a top seed somewhere, and they should be. They deserve it. Um, you know, they've got a senior-laden team. These kids have played together, you know, all the way through junior high. You know, we're, we're the big school. They're the small school. Um, they, they should think that they could beat us. I mean, I think they're 15-4 and four right now. But um, our kids are really looking forward to that game, too. I think it'll be a really good environment. Um Hopefully we can go over and play well. Well, well it'd be nice to make that trip over here to Wayne City to play in that new facility they have. Uh, it's a great place to watch basketball and a great place to play. So, like you said, it should be a, a big night. Uh, we hope so. Um, our JV team got a chance to play in their varsity tournament over there. So we, we got to spend some time in the gym. And, and uh, you know, like I said, I think, I think it'll be packed. I hope so anyway. Uh, both teams deserve that, I think. Yeah, I think that is a little bit of advantage for you, too, coming in. The fact that your guys have already been in the gym, they've played on that floor. Many of your JV guys, a lot of the guys that will be in the game, have played on that floor. They know how tight the rims are. <laughs> you they, know, they are tight. Uh, because they're brand new, they are very tight. Uh, but they know how the lighting is and all that. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's they're going to they're gonna be more comfortable walking in there, I think, Tuesday night than what they would be had they never you know, darkened the doors before. Yeah, those rims uh, kind of remind me of our Center Street rims. Yeah. From our junior high over here in town, um, pr- pretty pretty unforgiving at times, but it's the same for both teams. Yeah, know? it is. Um, but they, you know, I can't say enough. They have a really good team. Um, wish them well on every game except for Tuesday night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, speaking of the Center tr- Street team, we'd be amiss not to mention those young men here this morning. They're going to be playing for a regional championship on Monday night against the NCOE. Uh, are they twenty six and zero now on the season? We are 24 now. 24 now. 20, yeah, 24 now. Play a good North City team on Monday night. Hoping to get a big crowd for that. At, at, and it's at our place, Center Street. Um, we beat them by 15 earlier this year at North City, but you know, they've got a they've got a very quality team. Um, I think if we win, we play Pinckneyville in the first round of the state tournament. But uh, boys have had a great season. Uh, it's one of those seasons you don't ever want to want it to end. Um, so we wish them well. And then our New Hope ladies are playing for the championship today against a very, very good Germantown team in Class S over yeah. at Wren Lake. Yeah. So we'll wish them well, too. Germantown is like uh, four years in a row they've won that? Um, from what I've been told, yes. I saw them this summer. and They're, they're about as tall as boys junior high team. They've got yeah. some really, really good athletes. And, uh, that's just a factory over there in the Breeze area. They just yeah, it is. pump out good girls and boys teams every year. Must be all that ski soda that they're drinking over there. I don't know. Hey, boy, if that's what it is, I'm going to go get a few cases. <laughs> and we'll bring it over here. Yeah, that, that ski soda is pretty big stuff over there in uh, Clinton County. It really I kind of like it myself. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, that game today with New Hope, I believe that uh, championship game uh, against Germantown is at 2 o'clock, I think, this afternoon at Ren Lake, right? I think that's right. Yes, 2 o'clock. 2 yep. o'clock. All right. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. Again, congratulations on your win last night. And um, best of luck as you head into action this week, both against Wayne City and El Dorado. All right? Hey, thank you. Should be a good, good right. fun week. It will be. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. That's Coach Scott McElravey of the uh, Fairfield Mules. Good win last night for his team over Johnson City and bouncing back and playing some good basketball. Again, he's um, he's playing 10 guys, you know, running them in and out of there, playing 10 guys pretty deep. So. Yeah, you know, he's got some young kids that are really coming on here strong at the end of the season, and uh, that's going to give him some depth. You know, this time of year, depth becomes important, so it'll be interesting sure to see how the Mules uh, handle, but they've got a couple big challenges this week at Wayne City game playing them here at Wayne City Mm -hmm. Uh, that would be a big feather in Wayne City's cap if they could get the mules and then it's the rematch where Fairfield won 41 to 40 earlier in the season yeah at El Dorado yeah that'll be a a, quite a game too so yeah two big big games coming up for the mules and coming up next we're going to chat with Brian Gamber head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals they won the Midland Trail Conference tournament again last Saturday, and that was played at Wayne City this year, and Woodlawn has won that tournament every year in its existence. We'll talk to him about that and about his game earlier this week against Grayville and about games coming up. All that and more with our visit with Brian Gamber coming up next here on the Sports Couch. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. Most of us tend to take our printed materials for granted, but it's hard to imagine life today without print. Printing is communicating. Whether it's promotional, operational, or administrative, we're here to meet your printing needs. Peacock Print and Marketing has been serving the people in Southern Illinois since 1977. We're located at 1112 Jordan Street in Mount Vernon. Our phone number is 242-3157. Our website is peacockprinting.com. We believe in honoring God by serving our clients through print and marketing and helping them reach their full potential. You've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, there's actually a lot of truth to that, and you can get one-on-one instruction in baseball, softball, basketball, as well as speed and agility drills at the Sports Zone in Fairfield. The Sports Zone has been in business for quite some time now and has helped many area boy and girl athletes excel in their sport of choice. Lessons and practice times are available at convenient times that meet your schedule. The Sports Zone is located on Delaware Street in Fairfield, and we appreciate their support. Music and ministry on the vine is provided by Tony Wilt State Farm Insurance Agency in Mount Vernon. Tony Wilt State Farm Insurance Agency specializes in providing your life, health, auto, and home insurance, as well as complete financial services. They are located at 4121 South Water Tower Place in Mount Vernon. Their phone number is 242-1421, and their website is TonyWilt.com. We are grateful for their underwriting support. And hey, welcome back to the Sports Couch here live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 FM and 90.9 FM. The Vine. And, of course, also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson live in studio along with Danny Ounsman. We were uh, talking with Coach Scott McElravia Fairfield a moment ago and we were mentioning the fact about some uh, junior high State tournament action, Danny, and yes, that game is this afternoon at 2 o'clock where New Hope will take on Germantown for the Class S state championship. Uh, last night in Class M girls finals, it was Vienna over Nashville 51-42. Aviston took third place over Jonesboro 50-44. Today, not only will they play the Class S finals, they'll also play the Class L finals for girls as Heron takes on Massac County for first place, Mount Carmel against Centralia for third. And in the uh, the boys, of course, last night in the regional action, at Mount Vernon High School, a game we'll talk about more here in just a moment. Woodlawn beat Field 44-39 in overtime. And in the Class S Regional at uh, Spring Garden, or what used to be known as Dodds, it was Ewing beating St. Mary's 53-35 in the championship. And in the uh, Class S Regional at Bartelso, Oakville beat Bartelso in overtime 65-62. And as uh, Coach Scott McAravey was alluding to, his uh, Fairfield Colts team will be in the regional championship on Monday night against NCOE. And um, the winner will take on Pinckneyville, who won the Class M uh, regional down at Pinckneyville last week. So that kind of brings us up to date there. You can check out all those scores and stuff, of course, on our sports website here at areasports.net. All right, well, let's get back into it here. The uh, Woodlawn Cardinals won the Midland Trail Conference tournament championship last week which was played at wayne city this year and woodlawn has won that tournament every year of its existence which is a truly an amazing feat uh boy we're tough it was tough this year though and they were pushed to the wire by the waltonville spartans a team that beat them danny twice earlier in the year well you know randy it's hard to beat a team three times uh we got to witness that that was a great game over there and uh it was nice to see some good basketball and once again Woodlawn Cardinals are still the champs till somebody dethroned them and they won that game over Waltonville 41 to 39 let's talk about that right now and some other things with Woodlawn with the head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals that's Brian Gamber good morning Brian how are you hey good guys good morning to you great to have you on the sports couch first of all congratulations on uh, the tournament championship from from last Saturday I, I know that felt good and that was a hard hard fought game against Waltonville wasn't it yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was uh, it was a really good week for us, and then you know, at the, at the very end Saturday night, um, we knew we were playing a really good basketball team. We'd already seen them twice, 
and, and I, I really felt like, I mean, without a doubt, that, that, was, that was probably the best game that we had played all year. I thought defensively, we were really dialed in, and I thought we did a really nice job of, of uh, making them take, you know, some tough shots. And they, they've got a lot of weapons. they got a lot of kids that could really score. Um, and, and like I said, I, I, I thought I thought we did a really nice job on McVay and Wilson, who were two of the better scorers around. Um, and then, you know, our kids just kind of hung in there and made some big shots when we needed them to. And, you know, Jordan Hoppus stepped in and made some big shots. Like Barm and kind of um, is the engine that goes. So, you know, he, he made some really nice reads and good pass. Um, more than anything, you know, not just because it was one day who would beat us twice, but it was a huge, huge win for us. Uh, to kind of tell our kids, hey, when we really guard and play a certain way, you know, we, we have played some really good teams close this year. Um, to play them for the third time and to get over the top and, and beat them, um, you know, I think it, I think it allowed our kids to understand that, hey, you know, if we do a lot of things correct, play really hard and guard really well, you know, that they're going to be a lot of people's favorites to, you know, win a regional top. They can keep for a sectional. Uh, and so now our kids know that, hey, you know, we, we can play with anybody. We really can if we do things right. Uh, and to get over the top, that was huge for us. It was a huge week. Um, and, and we needed it because, you know, our, our schedule is brutal the rest of the year, and it starts today at Coorville. So we're really going to have to continue to play really well, and I feel like our last four games have been our best four games. Uh, and we're just going to try to continue to build on that as we move towards the postseason. Yeah, looking back at that game against Waltonville last Saturday, of course we were there to cover that game and, and video stream it uh, live on areasports.net, and so it's archived there as well. Uh, I thought you truly won the game down the stretch on defense because uh, Waltonville led much of the game, and they were really in position to to win the game, but you kind of took it away from them uh, um, figuratively uh, with your defense. I mean, it was it was a couple of big defensive stops, and uh, the big steal that you scored on in transition, I mean, that, that really ended up being the turning point of the game. Yeah, it, it definitely was. Um, we definitely won it with our defense. And the thing that, that makes them tough is, you know, I, and I told our kids and I told some other people that I, I really thought the last two minutes of the third quarter was the difference, allowing us to get back in. They were up by eight points. And, and, you know, we were kind of struggling. Mm-hmm. Uh, their kids, especially their, their big kid down in the pool. kids don't have much size. And so we, we went to some one three one just to finish the quarter. Uh, and in that, they, they took a three that they don't normally take. We get to rebound and score. And then Blake Wallerman comes from behind and steals it from McPhail, and we come down and score. So instead of them home for one shot and getting up 10 or 11, we cut it right back to four. Right. And, you know, kids kind of feel like, hey, we're, we're still in this. And then, you know, like you said, you know, back and forth, you know, in the fourth quarter. And, and uh, we, we kind of had a we had a bunny that we missed that would have put us ahead. But then, uh, you know, down one, we, we kind of just, you know, we told our kids, hey, we're, we're here soon. We're going to double off of. We're going to try to rotate through. And that's something, you know, we have done that quite a bit this year. Uh, and and a, a really good time to trap from Trey Isaac, and he's got some good length. And they try to throw the cross court, and Jordan Hopp did a great job of, you know, running the gap and stealing it. And, then, you know, I tell you, and, and, and rewatching, I told those kids, the best thing that he did outside of obviously the steal is as soon as he stole it, in that situation, a lot of kids panic and would try to just go do it themselves. He gave it immediately to Blake Wallerman, who that's where the ball needed to go. And Blake did a great job of, instead of shooting a contested layup, dropping it to a wide-open Trey Isaac, who hit the, you know, obviously at the mm-hmm. back point didn't know it, but the game-winning shot. Um, but two very big plays and two very unselfish plays uh, that allowed us to, you know, kind of pull that off. Yeah, yeah it was definitely some unselfish basketball there. Uh, we're having a little bit of problem uh, understanding you, Brian, so I don't know if there's a place where you can move where you're at a little bit. Maybe we'll get a little bit better cell reception, too, as we move forward on this interview. Okay. Okay. If you could. Uh, but uh, uh, then I want to talk about the game you had earlier this week against Grayville. And, you know, basketball is such a roller coaster ride. You know, you get on a high after winning a big tournament like that, and then you're, you're playing somebody that you should be able to dust off easy that you've played before. And, and those are kind of like trap games, so to speak, you know. Mm-hmm. And Grayville was exactly that earlier this week. And, in fact, Grayville came out, played inspired basketball, and they uh, were playing at your place. They had nothing to lose, and so they're going to come and bring it. And they did bring it, especially Mr. Robinson. He brought it. And, uh, you know, they were up on you at each of the three-quarter stops, and you had to rally and win that game, but you did. So so talk about uh, the perseverance there. 
Yeah, um, you know, like you said, we knew that, that coming off of the week that we had, um, obviously an emotional win on, on Saturday and then a short turnaround just, you know, Monday to prepare for Greenville. Um, it was going to be tough. It was going to be a tough task. They, they have some kids that can score the basketball. Um, and, you know, and our kids are smart enough to know, and we've talked about it to where, you know, we, we just we don't have the, the group to where we can just show up and just dominate people. It's just not it's not who we are. You know, we, we offensively, there, there are times where we kind of struggle, and we know that every game, even if a lot of outside people think, you know, hey, this is a game they should have been or they could dominate, you know, we're, we're going to continue to have to play really well and do a lot of things correct to beat those teams. And, and credit to Grable. Grable came in and shot extremely well in the first half. I think it was. I think they were around 78%. Mm, uh, wow. I, I, I told our kids part of that was I, I didn't feel like I, – I, I felt like we were playing hard. I just didn't think we were dialed in defensively where we needed to be. We gave up 33 points in the first half, which is way, way too many. Um, but, you know, like I said, the credit to those kids were stepping in and making them. They had some tough shots. The Robinson kids did three shots that – we're one step inside the half court line. Wow! And, and you know our kids look over, and, and those we can live with. You know, I mean, I, those are tough shots for, for NBA kids, and, and he just made them that night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I felt like in the second half we did do a better job of challenging shots. They only scored twenty points in the second half, which is where it needs to be. And really, the last three or four minutes, we really guarded. I think they missed their last eight shot attempts. Uh, and, and that was because, you know, we challenged a lot better than we did in the first half. But, you know, like like you said, the, the trap game, uh, this time of year you see some really crazy scores because, you know, about this time, you, you know, your kids are starting to get worn out mentally, maybe some physically. Uh, you know, they know postseason's right around the corner, the midweek. It's just it really is a crazy time of year, and you see some things. Um but again, like I said, I, I, I'm going to give Grayville credit. They played extremely hard. They battled. They competed, and they made a bunch, a bunch of shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but thankfully for us, yeah, in, in the second half, we really had some kids step in and, and make some some really big shots down the stretch. Uh, and I told them, you know, obviously we got some things to clean up defensively, but uh, that that would have been an easy game to just you know, hey, you're down eight points in the third quarter. Yeah. Um, Shut it down, and, and we were able to hang in there and, and find a way to win. Sometimes you have to do that, uh, and, and so I was happy to see that. I was happy to see some guys, uh, you know, step up, and make some big shots when we needed them. Well, you said the schedule doesn't get any easier tonight. Uh, you take on Goreville, and and then who you got after that? Talk about your schedule. Yeah, so uh, we have uh, we have Goreville tonight at Goreville, and then Tuesday on a short turnaround, Sesser comes to town, and they're playing really well. And then Friday we have to go to Sisney, um, and then we, we kind of finish the stretch out with uh, the following Friday. We, we get to make the trip to Metro East Lutheran. So um, there's, there's a few other games in there, but you know it's the final stretch. You know we got six games left. Uh, all of them are going to be extremely difficult. The Tuesday before Metro East, we, we play Wayne City at home on Senior Night. So uh, you know we've got we've got a really tough stretch, um, but. I mean, that's what it's about. You know, mm-hmm. this, this time of year, we, we are playing uh, at our best right now, and we need to continue to do that. Um, and, and I like the fact that our schedule is difficult the next, you know, two, two and a half weeks. Um, it's really going to get us ready uh, for that postseason. And, and I, I think a lot of teams would probably tell you the same thing. That, you know, no matter what regional, no matter who is in the regional, in our subsectional, I, I really think there's six or seven teams that if you get hot, uh, you have a really good chance to win in a regional and compete in the section. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I tell our kids that, hey, you know, it's up for grabs. There's a lot of really good teams, um, but, you know, you do things right and you're going to be able to play with those teams and give yourself a chance. I think a lot of teams are in that category. Um, and so the fact that we're going to place some of the best, you know, one A's round and some of the top teams in our subsectional down the stretch will kind of let us know, you know, one, where we're at, what we need to work on, two, how we kind of match up with them. You know, I, I obviously, being from, from Mount Vernon and playing, you always played everybody at least twice. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like that. You know, the first time you're kind of getting a feel for them, and then that next time, and maybe a third or fourth, you know, it's kind of, yeah. what kind of adjustments can you make and what can you do differently. And I, I like that. I like that part of it. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we're going to see these teams moving into postseason. Well, uh, Danny, it kind of ties in with just what you and I were talking about a little bit ago about uh, building towards postseason. Woodlawn going on the road tonight at Goreville, and then they got a couple of big games next week with Cesar Valier and and Cisney, and that just that's what you want this time. Wayne, Wayne City on senior night, yeah. you know, you know, not that those two teams are a little bit rivals or anything. <laughs> yeah, that'll be big. <laughs> hey, well, let's talk about a game that you witnessed last night. I know you had to be excited about. That's the uh, grade school team, the Woodlawn Warriors. Uh, they were winners last night at the regional over field. Of course, that's one of your main, well, that is the main uh, feeder school there for your program, and you had to be thrilled with the way that turned out last night. Yeah, it really was. It was a really good win for them, and I, I was just I was happy for the kids. Um, obviously, that that eighth grade class, one, yes, they they do have a lot of basketball skill and ability, but they they are just a really good group of kids. Um, I, I think I told you last night. I. The, the main thing, whether they would have won or lost last night, the thing that I love about them, and I've seen them several times, is they just compete. I mean, they, they like to play. They fly around. They, they share the ball, and they just go after it. Um, I think a lot of times in that situation, and we kind of tell our high school kids, hey, when you play in a big game, go at it. You know, any, anything worth winning, you need to be aggressive and, and, and play to win, not to hang on or not to lose. And I felt like last night there were three or four times where I think it would have been easy to say, you know what, let, let, let's try to pass it around. Let's try to just see if we can just hold on. And instead, the, the couple times the, the Mays kid and, and the England boys, they drove in there and, and made some huge plays and scored and got fouled in a situation where a lot of people may have just you know, tried to pass it around and run the clock out. And, and I like it. Those are the things I love seeing. I love seeing younger kids going and making plays and being aggressive and and playing to win that thing, I thought I thought they did a great job of that. Um, and, and again, I, I know if people haven't seen Seals, is very very good. I mean, I, I haven't seen a lot uh, of grade school basketball, but I, I would guess that uh, there's probably not many teams that are as good as Woodlawn and Field. And they went out last night. And I credit both of them playing hard and, and getting after. It. And it, it just it was a really good win for our kids, and hopefully they can carry that momentum into. You know, next Saturday when they go down to Rin Lake and, and get on a little run. Yeah, Danny, and I were just talking. It's a shame that both of them couldn't go down to uh, to Rin Lake College to the state tournament because it has to be two of the of the better teams in the Class S field this year, and it just that's the way it works it out. Just though, the right? way it, just yeah. way it worked out, they had to meet for a regional championship instead of uh, down there in a second or third round game. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, Brian, hey, thanks so much for joining us this morning on Sports Couch. Again, congratulations on success of winning the tournament again, and best of luck tonight as you take on a, a good Goreville team. All right? All right, thank you very much for having me on. You guys have a good weekend. Okay, you too. All righty. Bye-bye. Right. Brian Gamber, head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals, and, again, they had the night off last night, so he had a chance to watch his feeder school play. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure he's excited about that group. He, They've I got looked, a good young team. I looked up there in the seats, and he was all smiles, man, watching them play last night. Pretty happy to, to see what he's got coming into Woodlawn and knowing that the cupboard is not bare. You so. know, and I, I'm not sure – field i don't know i don't think they do but you know some of those upper jefferson county schools part of mm -hmm. those kids go to woodlawn part of them go to salem part of them go to mount vernon yeah, that's kind of a dividing line up in that mm -hmm. area but i think fields far enough to the east those kids probably will wind up at mount vernon most of them will wind up at mount vernon i think if you live north enough maybe in that school district you could potentially go, go to, to, salem. to salem uh and i guess east enough you could go to Weber, I guess, technically. But I think most of them do end up in Mount Vernon. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're a good team. They had a great season. So it was just a tough loss last night in overtime. Coming up next, we will talk to uh, Jeff Burkett, the head coach of the Woodlawn Warriors, about that Woodlawn and Field grade school basketball game last night, the championship of the Class S Regional. It was played at Mount Vernon High School. And we will talk to Jeff Burkett coming up next. Stay tuned. Sports Couch will be right back. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Bluford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. 
and now on translator W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio Foundation. The best Christian music, 90.9. Hamilton County Flooring on the south side of the square in McLeansboro offers a full line of flooring, cabinets, and countertops for your home or business. Countertops or showers are available in granite, quartz, corian, custom marble, or ceramic tile. Their showroom includes a complete line of flooring available in ceramic tile, cork, bamboo, hardwood, vinyl, laminate, and carpeting, including name brands such as Armstrong, Bruce, Marazzi, Mulligan, Shaw, and Tarquette. We thank Hamilton County Flooring in McLeansboro for their support. Real Life Radio is thankful for the underwriting support of Jeff Donahoe Insurance Agency in Mount Vernon. Jeff Donahoe Insurance Agency has offered multi peril crop insurance, providing revenue protection for farmers since 1978. They are located at 1121 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Their toll-free phone number is 866-276-7626. Jeff Donahoe Insurance Agency, the crop insurance specialist. 105.5 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine thanks Swivels Repair and Sales in McLeansboro for their monthly underwriting support of local Christian radio. They repair small engines and ag equipment, and they sell small engine parts, including oil filters and belts. They have agriculture aftermarket parts, interstate batteries, big truck parts, and truck lighting. As steel and Husqvarna dealers, they offer a wide variety of chainsaws, trimmers, and cutoff saws. Wibbles Repair and Sales in McLeansboro. Their phone number, 618-648-2227. Open Monday through Friday, Saturdays till noon. Welcome back to the Sports Couch here on a Saturday morning on 105.5 FM and 90.9 The Vine FM. And, of course, also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites, live video streaming at areasports.net, live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Ounsman. Danny, look, the sun is popping out all of a sudden, and it's nice. Yeah, you know, uh, it's nice to see the sun, but I don't think it's going to be very long-lived today. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not, according to the forecast. Well, uh, what a basketball game last night. If you like grade school basketball, you got your money's worth last night. An overtime game for the Class S Regional Championship. It was played at the new Mount Vernon Township High School gym, which was um, a good setting last night for that game because with as many fans who wanted to attend it, it would not have been able to be held really for everyone to see in one of the grade school gyms uh, within the county. And so last night was a good move to hold it at the high school. And what a game it was, 44-39. to 39, Woodlawn Warriors beat the Field Panthers in overtime to advance to the Class S State Championship and uh, down at uh, Renlake College. And Jeff Burkett, head coach of the Warriors, joins us right now. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Good morning. Congra- How are you guys? Doing great. Congratulations. you got to be very elated after the win last night. And, man, was that a tough battle. It wasn't easy, was it? No, it sure wasn't. Both teams are really good, good teams and really deserve to be there but unfortunately that happens every year so. yeah yeah it's just one of those things where you guys played each other already twice earlier in the year you had split uh, you'd beaten each other once and so that was a rubber game last night and everybody anticipated a tight battle and that's exactly what it was in fact it was tied at halftime yeah yes it, it was tied at half and and um you know you gotta take your hat off to the field panthers though as well they're a very good team very very well coached and uh um like I said, I, unfortunately, they weren't able to make it. Only one of us could. So. Yeah. Well, you know, down the stretch there in overtime, I mean, really, um, both teams had chances to win. Uh, and, and you had a chance to win in regulation. I think you had a 38-35 lead in regulation and a big three from the corner by field tied it. And then you get into you get into overtime and uh, there for a little bit it looked like field was going to was going to take it and then you came battling back i mean it was just really a seesaw battle all the way with some some really big plays by uh, some young men yeah they, they all both teams both teams players some individual players stepped up i mean simmons hit that three pointer to to tie the game to um, in regulation and you know um, he's a good ball player and then but our kids as well they just kept they kept fighting and uh, never gave up and just came down to both teams who wanted the who wanted it the most and and uh luckily we were just able to prevail and uh you know you had you lost one of your players uh, via the foul route i believe in overtime and so you know you had to go to your bench and again it's a pressure situation but uh, again the guys stepped up and came through you know when they had to 
Yeah, they did. You know, we we had played mainly six, seven players all season um, at the varsity level, and, and uh, those kids uh, they they were they were prepared and they were ready. Uh, we had some good defense by uh, two of the two of our guys off the bench that really really did a good job. When you went into the over, when you went into the um, locker room at halftime, tied, I believe it was either seventeen seventeen or nineteen nineteen at halftime. Uh, what was your thoughts there in the locker room at halftime, and and as way the, the way the game was going at that point? Yeah, I, you know, I had told the kids, I said, guys, this is this is where we knew we'd be. You know, we just got two more quarters. We got to give it everything we had. And, you know, I had told them before the game, uh, regardless of what happened, um, or the outcome. Um, they were still champions in my book, and uh, I said we just got to got you know another fourteen minutes. Got to give it your all, and and uh, just keep pushing away and doing what we're doing. You recently played a game against the Fairfield Colts, and you played that at Wayne City. And uh, Fairfield, of course, is a very very good Class M team. They're twenty four and zero right now, and probably going to be down at state. Playing in that game, do you think that that really also benefited you to play a team like Fairfield in that game, and then that might have benefited you in your game last night against Field? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we've uh, – not to my doing, but, you know, in the past, uh, Woodlands tried to play a pretty tough uh, competition schedule, and, and, uh, and uh, with that being said, you know, I think that did help us. Um, the Fairfield is definitely one of the better teams in the area, and uh, that really, I, I do believe it was it benefited us. Yeah, because I mean, I know they beat you in that game, but I, you had to have learned a lot from that loss to the Fairfield absolutely. Colts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most of the times you lose, you, you you know you you learn more from your losses than you do your wins. Mm-hmm. And, uh, definitely, um, it, it definitely was a, a big help for us. Well, I want to give you a chance to talk about your, your fan support and particularly the student body that was there last night. I've got a, a video, on, or not a video, but a picture on the screen right now for those people who are watching our video stream and uh, of the student section. They were a lively bunch last night, and that really brings a lot to the enthusiasm and the atmosphere. And Talk a little bit about that support from the students, from the school, from the parents, all the fans at Woodlawn. You know, Woodlawn's always been a good community and supported their, their sporting events, and, and you know, um, it definitely... Uh, encourages the the players and coaches. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the boys uh, even had their their uh, some of the JV players had their their faces painted up, and and the, the girls basketball team they were there in support. It just means a lot to the kids, and, and like I said, the coaches. So um, we're definitely uh, appreciative of that. Sure. Why, why I say that? Talking about appreciation, I, I really appreciate uh, Coach Creel in, in the Mount Vernon. Uh, Malvern school system allowing us to play at the at uh, the new gymnasium that really um, was definitely a, a great opportunity for the players uh, both field and in Woodlawn to, and I think it was uh, a, a great atmosphere for that type of game. Uh, it was a good choice because again you couldn't have got all those fans into any of the great school gyms in the county so that was a great choice to play the regional this week uh, at, at Malvern Township High School. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I was glad to see that that. That that occurred. Okay, so now you go down to Ren Lake College for the uh, Class S uh, Junior High State Tournament. So, do you know yet who your opponent will be? Uh, I believe we play Alvarado. Um, that was that out of that region. It was Alvarado or Giant City, and um, I believe Alvarado won that game. Um, was it? Yeah, they did. Nine to seven or something. Yeah, like the, that. you're right. They did, and that's uh, that, and that's uh, yeah, El Verado with a V, not a D. So because those two schools sound alike, so when I let everybody know, it's El Verado with a yeah. V, not a D. And uh, yeah, they were winners over Giant City last night, I believe, something like twenty-seven to seven or something. So, uh, do you know much about them outside of uh, that score from last night? No, I do not. I actually I don't know anything about that. Going to try to maybe uh, you know try to see what we can find out about them and and uh, kind of uh, get prepared this week for that team and then and, and just uh, keep keep pushing away. Well, we had uh, Coach Brian Gamber, the the varsity coach from the high school at Woodlawn, on with us just right before you, and he was there last night in attendance and very excited about how your boys played last night. And I know he's licking his lips to see particularly this eighth-grade class coming into Woodlawn High School as part of the feeder program. Absolutely. Um, you know, Coach Gamber is a good coach, and, and he has he has supported uh, the the grade school team. He's came out and watched the players a couple good, couple different times, and 
and I'll be honest, I've asked him and uh, Coach Witzel, you know, um, if they ever see anything, to definitely tell me, um, you know, somewhere we can improve on. And they've they've been a, uh, a good uh, sounding board, I guess you would say. Well, that's great that you have that relationship and you're not afraid to ask them and, and they're not afraid to reach out to you. So that's good that you've got that relationship because that can only uh, make things better. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, Jeff, again, we say congratulations to you this morning on that Class S Regional Championship win last night over field. And best of luck as you move down there to the Junior High State Tournament at Ren Lake College. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm sure that you will. Thank you very much, Randy. It's been a privilege. Okay. You bet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jeff Burgett from uh, Woodlawn. And uh, sounds pretty happy this morning, doesn't he? Well, anytime you win a regional championship, you're going to be <laughs> happy. And uh his Cardinals are uh, headed down there to Ren Lake College. Uh, that'll be a festive atmosphere down there next Saturday. Yeah, and, and he knows about as much as I do right now about El Verado. Again, they were winners last night over Giant City. And, you know, usually Giant City is down there. They've always got a good basketball program. So that El Verado bunch must be pretty good, the fact that not only did they beat a Giant City team, but they beat them by 20 points last night. So they must be pretty talented. I started to say, they sounds like they've got a pretty good group of uh, players down there at that school. So, again, that's in the Class S Junior High State Tournament, Southern Illinois Junior High School Athletic Association. That will begin uh, next week. Uh, you want to run through scores again, Danny, and I'll get our next coach on the line. Yeah, looking at some other scores from other games last night around the area. Christ Our Rock, uh, 58, Mulberry Grove, 30. That Christ Our Rock team's playing quite a bit better here toward the end of the season. Edwards County defeated Wayne City last night, 51-45. to 45. Oakville defeats Columbia 57 to 50. Patoka gets Sisney 51 to 37. Bethalto 48, Waterloo 47. Breeze Central 60, Freeburg 48. And in a upset game last night, the number 1 ranked team and 2A, the Teotopolis Wooden Shoes, fall to Breeze Modern Day 69-64 and that's the first loss for Teotopolis on the season. <coughs> Excuse me. Century 79, Joppa 74 in overtime. Cobden defeats El Verado 44-43. Egyptian 73, Dongola 42. Hillsborough 53, Greenville 45. Nakoma 66, Staunton 28. Pena with a big win last night over Carlisle 57-52. Steelville defeats New Athens 60-51. Trenton Westland, 43, Redbird, 29. Triad defeats Mosquito, 57-43. Waterloo Jabot over Chester, 73-51. All right, and again, you can see all those scores and more on our sports website at areasports.net. One of the scores that Danny just mentioned was the Edwards County Lions beating the Wayne City Indians last night. Lions won it over the Indians 51-45, to and joining us right now is the head coach of Edwards County, that's Russ Gerlach. Good morning, Russ. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Great. Good to have you on the sports couch again, and congratulations on the win. It sounds like that was a very hard-fought game. Tell us about it. Uh, it definitely was. Uh, you know, we were nip and tuck there quite a bit. Uh, a couple of their players got in foul trouble, and we were able to build a seven-point lead, and uh, they put them back in. And some of our kids got in foul trouble, and it seemed like it uh, score flip-flopped pretty quick. I think they got up by one or two going into halftime. Uh, Third quarter was pretty much the same thing. It was uh, back and forth. Uh, I think anybody got up by more than two. And then luckily there in the fourth quarter, we were able to start getting a little bit of a lead about halfway through and got it up to six or seven and hit a three to put us up ten and was able to hold on after missing a free throw or two to win by six. Wow. Now, was that game played at your place or at Wayne City? Yes, at our place. At, at your place last night, okay. And, and clearly you had a little bit of a size advantage going into the game last night uh, over Wayne City, but even though Wayne City's not real tall, they do move that ball very well, don't they? Yes, uh, you know, they're very quick. Uh, you know, I think uh, we were faster in all five spots, and it felt like at times they were – I'm sorry, we were taller in all five spots, and it felt like at times they were faster in all five spots. And, you know, I think they kind of engaged each other a little bit, and that's what kept it so close uh, – you know, they they run their sets very well, and you know they're you know they're used to uh, teams trying to take away one thing, and they've always got counters, and they did a great job with that. And you know we tried to you know rotate who we were trying to get the ball in the post, and that's uh, something else they do a good job of. They they really dig down and help in on the post players, so it was hard to get some you know get some of the dump downs that we were able to get early or, or other times of the season, and 
No, it was just a pretty evenly matched game, uh, two really good teams, and glad we were able to come out on top. Well, you mentioned that uh, a couple of the Indians got in foul trouble. Do you remember who those were, what players those were that got in? Oh, uh, yeah, they, uh, Green and Dickey both got two fouls there in the second quarter. They came out, and then uh, I believe they you know, they came back in, and at the same time we had two of our starters, uh, Marty Schmittler and Bobby Brake, get some foul trouble. Well, actually, Bobby picked up his third. I feel like we kind of had to leave him in there for a little bit longer than probably what I should have with the two fouls, and unfortunately he got his third, but he, he didn't even – he didn't pick up one in the second half, so obviously he learned his lesson from that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounded like quite a game last night. And, and again, that's the kind of games that you want here down the stretch as you start to try to, to build towards postseason. You want to play that good competition and really be challenged, right? Well, I was say, it seems like it's been that way all season for us. You know, we had a couple easy games early there, the Thanksgiving tournament, and then we had a, you know, a couple fairly easy games before this one. But, you know, of our, I guess we've almost played 20 games now, We've only had maybe four or five that I would say were, I hate to use the word easy, but, you know, kind of wrapped up early. Almost everything we've had this year feels like it's come down to the last couple of minutes. So we've we've been in quite a few battles this year. We're, we're used to it. And what's your overall record now, Russ? 15-4. Uh, and 15-4. Well, your team uh, has got some big games coming up this coming week. Uh, back to Black Diamond action. Who do you have this week, Russ? Uh, Karma at home on Tuesday, then we go uh, visit you on Friday there at Hamco, and then Saturday we're at that Benton shootout. Well, that is going to be a big week. Who you, who do you have over at Benton? Uh, Marshall County, Kentucky. Well, that'll be an interesting game over there. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of ga- good games over there next Saturday at Rich Heron Gym, and boy, they've made some upgrades to that place, and uh, that'll be another great venue for your kids to go play at. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was, like I said before, we've we've tried to up the schedule a little bit since we're a, a two A school now, and you know we've you know up the tournaments a little bit, and now we're going to you know, upgrade this, having this shootout, and you know we knew we were going to play somebody we wouldn't normally see, and uh, I think he Ron had given me a couple of options, and I said, yeah, we we don't play these guys, and, and then I think uh, Marshall County might have been a late add to the tournament, so we ended up draw or the shootout and ended up drawing them, and. You know, it's definitely a, a team we haven't seen before and we're not going to see again, so it's nice to play somebody different. Yeah, you know, uh, that's what coaches like. You like that as a coach. You like that as a player. Uh, you get to go and experience somebody else. And, you know, uh, irregardless of whether you win or lose that game, as long as your team draws something out of that that they can use in the next few weeks in this postseason run that you're getting ready to start, uh, it makes you a better ball club. Absolutely. You know, of, of our four losses, only one was by double digits. You know, so we've, we've been at all of them at the end. And I, I, like you said, I think that has, uh, has helped us throughout some of these other games that we've won that were, you know, single digit wins as we've, you know, learned to play in the, the tough games down the stretch, you know, making free throws at the end, taking care of the ball, uh, you know, making sure you secure the rebound on those, you know, last minute kind of heave shots that teams have to throw up in a hurry. And, you know, all those tight games, I think have paid off and, you know, I was telling somebody else last night, we we really seemed out of sorts. And then just all of a sudden, the facial expressions all changed. It was like, you know, we've done this a 100 times this year. Let's just calm down and play. And we did and finished strong. Well, you know, Russ, like you said, uh, being able to draw on some of those experiences when it gets down to crunch time and a thing. And sometimes it's the difference between winning and losing ball games. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, Early in the season, we had some uh, fairly decent-sized leads that we kind of let dwindle around, away. Uh, you know, Vienna was definitely one of them where we got a pretty good lead, and you know, we almost threw that one away. And you know, I think last night when we got up ten, and then they drove down and got a layup. Uh, we went down and missed a free throw. They came down, and I think uh, there's kind of one of those loose ball situations where it just happens to roll right to the guy by the basket, and he scores. So it goes from ten to six, and it's like 50 seconds left, and. You know, we've been through that enough times that we didn't panic and we stayed or, you know, kept our composure and, you know, got the ball in bounds, made some more free throws and was able to hang on. Well, that uh, that game coming up, you said you got uh, Carmi on the schedule and you got uh, El Rado coming up, at, right? Is that you said? Uh, this week is uh, uh, Carmi and Hamilton County. Car- Carmi and Hamilton County, but El Dorado's still in the future, I guess, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's our last game of the season. Yeah, I think it's right around the 17th or 18th. Yeah, well, uh, looking at the score last night between El Dorado and Hamilton County, I don't know if that surprised you or not, and Danny can elaborate <laughs> on that about uh, really 
how well uh, Hamco played against El Dorado and how that game was really close all the way. Um, that that makes that Hamilton County game uh, kind of a trap game for you, so to speak. And, of course, Carmi is going to be tough. They're always tough. Well, I was going to say, you know, we beat Carmi by three. We only beat Hamilton County by six or eight. So I, I like to think that our kids aren't going to look past either one of them. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about how the entire, I guess it was after, you know, the Sissy game on Tuesday, you know, we were able to win that one fairly easily. But I said, you don't have an easy game left, period. It doesn't matter if it's uh, the first round of regionals we lose or if we, you know, make it all the way to the state championship. We don't have one easy game left. We can't look past anybody. And, you know, I, I think our guys understand that. Uh, you know, we do play a lot of younger guys, but I think they, I think they understand how hard we have to play and how we've got to be focused every night. And, I'd like to think we're not going to look past anybody. Well, Russ, don't you think uh, by beefing your schedule up, going down there and competing in that El Dorado tournament, your chi- your kids really got to experience that atmosphere down there, and they also found out what it takes. You've got to bring your best effort all the time. you got to do the little things to win because when you play good teams, it's such a fine line between winning and losing and the team that usually does those things. Last night – uh, the Foxes had the ball and had a chance to take the lead late in the game. They miss a shot. El Dorado goes and scores. Foxes come down. They get another great look at a basket, and the ball just don't go in. El Dorado gets the rebound, goes down and scores. Foxes come back trying to keep it very, very tight. Uh, had a good look. Uh, shot got blocked. They had uh, got the stick back. It wouldn't fall. El Dorado gets the rebound, gets fouled, and go down and make a couple free throws, and then the next thing you know, you're at the final margin there. Oh, yeah, it doesn't seem like it takes long. You go from uh, down one, chance to get the lead, to uh, all of a sudden now you're down six or seven, and then you've got to start going into that desperation mode where you're taking quicker shots and you got to foul, and you know a, a, a tight game then all of a sudden looks like a blowout. Uh, you know, you're right there. You know, I've, The football coach I used to work with always said the football game t- came down to five plays. And I sometimes think basketball, those tight games are kind of the same thing. There's usually five plays you can look at where one team misses a layup or uh, the ball just bounces right off their hands. It goes out of bounds. Or like I was saying a minute ago, uh, a loose ball that rolls right to the guy by the basket. You know, he didn't even make a move for it. It just jump, It just bounces right to him and he goes right up with it. And, you know, some of those things are out of your control. And some of those things, you know, you do, you're the one that makes the play and, you just got to hope that hopefully those five or six plays like that go in your favor. Yeah, you know, uh, like you said, sometimes it's just a bounce of the basketball and being in the right place <laughs> yeah. at the right time. A uh, guy always told me one time he'd rather be lucky as good. Well, I, I've, I've heard that many times myself. I think that's pretty true. Well, Russ, hey, we appreciate you joining us this morning on, on the Sports Couch. Again, congratulations on the a big win last night over Wayne City, a hard-fought win against a, a good, good basketball team. And uh, how did it feel, one more question before I let you go, how did it feel, again, coaching against that Wayne City bunch? Because you knew those guys uh, from Wayne City since you used to be in Wayne City, and you knew those guys when they were younger and that sort of thing, and they'd been uh, through part of your program and your camps and stuff like that. So uh, how was that uh, as a coach on the other side last night? Well, those seniors were freshmen there my last year there. and You know, I've, I've told some people I, I just I've, I never have enjoyed that game, uh, coaching against them. It just – it feels weird. I, I, I can't imagine what a college coach who recruits kids and then goes to a different job and, you know, has to then has to coach against them. I think that would just – that just it's a weird feeling, and I, I just I haven't necessarily enjoyed it. Uh, you know, so I'm kind of glad they're graduating. Uh, they don't have to worry about that in the future, but I definitely wish them a lot of success. They've had a great season, and you know, I really think they can make a pretty good postseason run. Yeah, I think they can too. But I think your Lions have got a chance to do some damage too in two A. So we look forward to. I, I hope so. Look forward to seeing how that all plays out. So Russ, have a good weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you down the line. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Bet. Bye bye. Uh, bye. Russ Gerlach, head coach of the Edwards County Lions, and yeah, you know they are holding their own not only in the Black Diamond Conference, but they're holding their own two A basketball since they bumped up this year. Uh, Fifteen and four now, Danny. He's got a good basketball team. Well, he's got a lot of strengths, uh, Randy. He's got some inside play. He's got some kids that can handle the basketball and the best part about it is he's got a bunch of young kids he's starting three sophomores oh i know it's pretty scary when you think about it that way well Flora wolves got a big win last night in little line eye conference play we will talk to coach phil lieb of the Flora wolves coming up next as the sports couch continues so stay tuned we'll be right back
It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. Crawford Plumbing LLC in Woodlawn is licensed, bonded, insured, and ready to serve your household and business plumbing needs. From leaky faucets to complete plumbing systems and repair, Crawford Plumbing in Woodlawn is a full-service plumbing company. They can be reached at 618-242-3360. Crawford Plumbing in Woodlawn is a proud underwriting sponsor of Real Life Radio. Underwriting on the Vine is provided by B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon. B&C Bicycle Fitness specializes in bikes for the beginning rider to the high-end racer and can equip you with a comfortable bike to enjoy a healthy, active lifestyle with family and friends. B&C Bicycle Fitness is a full-service bicycle shop and is located at 410 South 27th Street in Mount Vernon. Their phone number is 816-4077. B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon where the adventure begins. Hey, welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 FM and 90.9 The Vine FM. And, of course, also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. We have live video streaming right now on areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. Let's shift gears here a little bit, talk about uh, action in the Little Illini Conference. Again, if you uh, check our scoreboard, Danny was talking about it earlier in the Little Illini Conference tournament. The championship was won by the Marshall Lions. They beat uh, the Robinson Maroons 68-54 in the title game. The Albany Tigers defeated Lawrenceville for third place 59-58. On the consolation side, Floor Wolves got a win last night over Paris Tigers by a score of 70-65. to Good win for the Wolves. And a high-scoring game, too, for that matter. And let's find out more about it as we visit with head coach Phil Lee with the Floral Wolves. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, good morning. I'm uh, wonderful on this beautiful day. Uh, it is a beautiful day. We were just talking about how the sun had popped out, and Danny was wondering how long that sun was going to be there, but it's sure nice to see it, isn't it? It is. Uh, just a friendly reminder that there's always hope. So. Absolutely. It sure is. And a uh, good win last night for your Floral Wolves over Paris, 70-65. to Tell us about that. Um, I said uh, we just been playing pretty good basketball this past week. Uh, had a win over Newton on Monday and uh, with a come from behind victory, uh, beat Casey on Wednesday and then uh, carried that into on the last night against Paris. Uh, who we just played that previous week, uh, they beat us by eleven. Wow! Uh, the week before and without probably their best player, it was a, a six six post player named Salem Isaac. Uh They didn't didn't have him, so they had him last night, but. Uh, uh, the Wolves are pretty resilient. I mean, we came out uh, firing on all cylinders, put up 24 points the first quarter. Uh, but our defense wasn't very good, and we held them to 21. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And it wasn't uh, anything up-tempo game. It was just that neither team could get a stop. And uh, things settled down a little bit, but not a lot. I mean, it was just a good scoring offensive frenzy on both sides. Just a, tip, uh, just a typical coach there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, he can see the great thing, but then he turns around and he finds a negative right off the bat, Randy. What do you think about <laughs> yeah, it? Well, yeah, it sounds that, like that it. That is true. I mean, we had some guys hitting three that hadn't hit one all year, and it was, uh, that was encouraging. But uh, at the same time, you knew it wasn't going to last. So at, at some point in time, your defense got to step, step up and step through, and uh, they did that towards the end, and uh, the Wolves uh, – Really never trailed in the game. They tied it up a little bit. The Tigers did in midway through the third, but uh, uh, and even took the lead, I think. But after that, we called timeout, and the uh, Wolves, uh, I said, pretty resilient. Uh, started moving the ball better again, got some good looks, and attacked the basket. And uh, I think we shot about 60% from the twos and uh, 40% from three, and then uh, about 70% from free throw line. So anytime you do those, that type of stat, you're doing some good things. And uh, and we out rebounded them about uh, 12. So. Uh, all good indicators of uh, of the outcome of what it was. You know, Coach, uh, you pointed to all those things, and you're right. It takes all those things to get victories in high school basketball, doesn't it? It does. And it's, those are just some uh, telltale signs, so to speak, but there's already all those intangibles that lead to them, uh, you know, as far as your effort on defense. How many deflections are you getting to force bad shots or bad offensive possessions on their end? I mean, all those things uh, play into it. Uh, but like I said, they uh, – 
they had some good action going on. They had a good guard with the Johnson who had uh, uh, those two guys, Johnson and Isis, had uh, 27 and 26 respectively. Uh, rest of them, we did a good job on those. Uh, <laughs> the other five or six guys, but those two, we just could not stop. And uh, but we we uh, we beat them by majority, not necessarily with one or two. But uh, Trevin Smith stepped up big for us. He had 23 last night, and we had a couple other guys in double figures, and we had a uh, about six of them uh, with five or six points. But all those five or six points adds up in the book and uh, they add up on the end and they add up for a victory for us well the thing i'm impressed with really uh is the fact that you know the way you started the season off i mean let's let's yeah. be honest you know it started off really pretty dismal and you had a lot of losses out of the gate and you know it's real easy to hang your head and just kind of throw in the towel and just be uh, you know discouraged and that sort of thing but but man oh man your uh, your floor wolves are not quitting and to put together string together uh, some nice wins this week in the tournament. Uh, again, a win over Newton, a win over Casey Westfield, and a, a win over Paris last night, a team that had just beat you by 11 points without this uh, uh, stud player of theirs. Um, I, boy, that just speaks volumes not only for your, your kids but for you as well as a coach, and it just uh, it's refreshing to see that they're not quitters. Yeah, and that's exactly right, and uh, that's amazing you said that, that you know, we've, uh, you know, we've got very familiar with the people there at Robinson and hosted us. We was there four nights this past week. So anyway, uh, one of the store uh, people there at the store bench said, you know, Coach, I really enjoyed watching your team this week and said uh, they just don't quit. And uh, that's just uh, an exemplary of what they can do, what they can accomplish, and if they learn any life lessons. It's about being a good person, about having great character, but it's also about not quitting. Uh, there's too many quitters in this world, uh, whether it's fathers or husbands or, you know, citizens, anything like that. you got to persist. you got to greet each day like it's a new and fresh day like the great day and uh, the wolves are doing that and uh, i said that we uh against monday night uh last saturday we had a practice and i just challenged them uh, we just warmed up divided up the teams and i told them i'm tired of talking it's it's got to come from within you guys you guys got to start communicating you guys got to start leading uh once you start doing that things will come together and sure enough they did uh, against newton we were down 12 with uh, three three and a half minutes to go and uh wow you know, I know, and that normally, and I, I got a technical. I don't normally do that. Uh, <laughs> it was my fifth one in 17 years, so that's how rare those are. And, wow. but, uh, and it wasn't strategic. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to do that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> those, the, the Wolves responded, man, they responded well. Something lit a fire underneath them, and uh, next thing you know, we win. We come back, and we win at the buzzer. Well, they, uh, they we, seen a side of you they had never seen, had they, Coach? <laughs> Well, one of my players got hurt, and that's uh, you just—it's like you protect your family. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can yell at your kids, you can discipline your kids, but when someone else hurts your kids, watch out. I mean, and that's you know—they're my kids, so it's a. Uh, well, uh, you know, just, uh, I appreciate that, Coach. You know, like you said, uh, it's your responsibility to stand up for your kids and to take care of them. Uh, I played for David Lee, and he always said, "He said we're not going to have this issue of you guys getting." technicals or things like that if anybody's going to get a technical and somebody needs to stand up and fight i'll be the guy that stand up and fight and then we'll (laughs) we'll take care of the consequences afterwards so you know uh, i appreciate that coming from you because i know that if you got pushed to that limit things were getting pretty serious it was and it's uh i've yet to swear yet for any of my five technicals but uh and that won't happen uh but at the same time you know i thought they fish would be a little thicker skinned and i called him you're amazing um, which I guess he's self-confident in his ability. So, uh, but anyway, <laughs> or self-conscious anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Wolves responded well, and then uh, we carried that momentum, that confidence into uh, the Wednesday night against Casey. And uh, they're a much improved team. Uh, they got some size and some athletes, some uh, physicality with them. But uh, the Wolves just kept the pressure going. We kept the momentum going, and uh, uh, won another close game. Hit free throws down the stretch. Uh, and the same thing with uh, Paris. I mean, it's. One thing to have it lead and control the game, but uh, when you when you start to put things away and finish it, that's that's when you start growing up. That's when you start maturing, and that comes taking care of the ball, and that comes up with the hidden free throws. And a lot of people said, you know, it's easier said than done. Uh, but once you figure those things out, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun to coach. Well, you know, coach, it's uh, it's a pretty fine line between winning and losing sometimes, and it's all yeah. the small things that happen during a game that sometimes decide the outcome, you know, a hustle to a loose ball or just getting a fingertip on it to keep somebody from scoring an easy basket and things like that. A lot of times it's just effort. It's exactly right, and that's what led us to that Newton victory 
Uh, it was 20 seconds left in the game, and it was a tie ball game. We worked our way just to tie it, and Trevin Smith uh, stepped in front of a pass, and now it's a loose ball situation in the other backcourt, and he dies for it, which forced the Newton kid to die for it. All of a sudden it goes out on Newton. Now it's our ball with 15 seconds left. But without that hustle, without that determination, we don't put ourselves in that position. Uh, it's just the little things. It's the number one killer in Africa is malaria from the mosquitoes. It's not the lions. It's not the hippopotamus. It's not the elephants. It's, it's the small things that lead to victories. It's those details that, you know, but, but once you are diligent with the details, you learn to master those, those other big things, they become a lot easier. We'll talk about what the upcoming schedule for your Flora Wolves. Well, it gets, doesn't get any easier. We got the Altamont on Tuesday, and they're playing a lot better. I know they had a tough schedule early on also. Uh, but they they got an Armstrong uh, guard who's uh, pretty good. They got some post players that are pretty good. So we got a work cut out for us. But fortunately, it's at home. So hopefully, take care of business there. Then we got Casey again uh, coming up on Friday. Um, I know they'll be out for blood, so to speak. Uh, just uh, we just seen them this past week, so they'll want some retribution. And then after that, we uh, go back on the road. We got the, at Salem. I haven't played them in uh, probably ten plus years. So we we picked them up this year. Um, go to their place, and then we go to Paris, which is going to be a journey in itself. Uh, so that'll be the third time in two weeks that we'll play them, two and a half weeks. And then uh, uh, then we go to Fairfield uh, that second week in February, and then we close out a regular season game at home against uh, Red Hill, who's playing pretty good. And then we, have, uh, we do host the regionals this year, so we're pretty excited about it. Oh, you got three games coming up against old NEC teams. It is. It's, and that's kind of exciting, I mean, because that rivalry uh, – just doesn't ever fade away. It just, it's always still there. And uh, you know, some of these kids that we have now don't remember those things. But uh, getting uh, people like our age and even you know in the mid thirties or even younger than that, that they still remember those times and those uh, those games, those intense rivalries. And uh, and it's probably still be true today. And you know, like I said, we got Salem, you know, Fairfield, and uh, Red Hill coming up, and uh, there'll, there'll be some good games with it. Well, I guarantee you, when you play that game at Salem, uh, they'll remember it there uh, with Coach Andy Fernbacher, former Flora boy himself. Yeah, he he is, and he's doing a good job with them. I mean, he's getting them playing hard and playing together. Um, you know, they're gonna be physical. I think they're big. I mean, you know, they're three A and they're playing a tough competition. Uh, so it's they're not gonna look at us and be intimid- intimidated at all. But at the same time, we can't go over there and be intimidated. Um, you know, sometimes early on the physicality started to bother us a little bit, but uh, I think we've learned out, learned throughout the year that uh, you got to match that physicality with more intensity and uh, more effort. Uh, not shy away from it, but go at it. And that's that's how you face your fear. You you face it head on. You go at it. You don't run from it. And so the Wolves are learning from that, and uh, hopefully we continue to learn from that and keep getting better. Mm-hmm. Are you going to keep that game on your schedule uh, after this year with Salem? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think at least a two-year contract. Yeah, I I, I like that. I, I I'm really glad to see that. I think it's good for both schools. Yeah, I mean, we're only thirty miles apart, and it's uh, everyone just was never really an opening until this this past year, and so uh, it's available now. And sometimes, you know, as a coach, you look at things that uh, just where you're at as far as what kind of you need what you need to do uh, with your non-conference schedule, and you got to be careful in the sense that you can schedule. A, schedule yourself right out of a job because it's all you're doing is, is playing uh, head knockers, so to speak. It, it's going to be tough on you, but at the same time, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So it's just um, that there comes a time when those teenage minds, it's, uh, you got to be careful that their ego and their confidence because uh-huh. sometimes you, you, you tell them, hey, you're doing some good things. We're just playing really good competition. But uh, whether they believe that or not is one thing because they're not seeing the results. But you know, this past week, I think they've seen those results that uh, that's, that's paid dividends yeah. uh, for that. So, anyway, that's kind of a, and kind of a and also there, but. also, coach uh, the community. You know, uh, everybody loves a winner and nobody likes a loser. They don't like you being in second place. No, they don't. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, we this country is <clears> built on winners, and that's who we are, and we still compete to win. But uh, you know, we learn through life. And through competition, there's more important things than the winning and the losing. But at the same time, that's why we keep score, um, and that's what we do. And you know, the consolation championship that may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but that means something to our kids. That means we didn't give up. We didn't. We kept fighting. We kept persisting, and uh, we came home with some hardware. Uh, when, we, like you said, we could have easily folded, but instead we come out of there with three wins in a row, and that's only the second time we've done that this year. So hopefully, we can continue to keep that up. 
you know, a lot of t- a lot of times there ain't very many teams finish three and one in a tournament. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They won three oh, out of four uh, in the tournament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were just talking about that this morning with uh, Randy Poole. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a lot of times we've got fourth many times. It's been one and two. Well, I'd, yeah, that's great. But at the same time, I think I'd rather go three and one. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Sure is. Yeah. All right. Well, Coach, we appreciate you joining us this morning on the Sports Couch. Again, always a pleasure to talk to you. And, again, congratulations on the win last night for your Florida Wolves. And best of luck in your upcoming schedule, all right? All right. Well, thank you, and God bless. You guys do an awesome job. Keep it up. Thank you. Have a good weekend already. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Head Coach Phil Lieb of the Florida Wolves. And uh, (laughs) I love that. You're amazing. Bing! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> teed him up. <laughs> well, I wonder if he learned that one from his brother Greg la- last night. Uh, You're amazing, Josh. Dang. Josh Bradley. Uh, he uh, looked at the official and he said, "That's terrible." I could read. I had a good view on it, and he said, "That's terrible." And the guy just looked at him, and Billy Rocket was on listening. And I said, "Well, Billy, I said, how would you handle that situation?" He said. The key word was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how Billy would have handled being called amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to ask him. Oh, that's great. Well, speaking of Josh Bradley, we are going to have him on next, the head coach of the Eldorado Eagles. Talk about their win last night over the Hamilton County Foxes. That's coming up next on the Sports Couch. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. and 90.9 The Vine is thankful for the ministry partnership with Country Bob's All-Purpose Sauce in Centralia. Country Bob's product line includes the original all-purpose sauce, seasoning salt, barbecue sauce, spicy all-purpose sauce, honey habanero, apple chipotle, and marinara. Country Bob's is located on U.S. Highway 51 south of Centralia and can be reached by calling 800-373-2140. Support for The Vine Radio Ministry is provided by Quinn Law and Mediation LLC in Mount Vernon. When faced with a legal problem, you may try to navigate your way through the courts and all that paperwork on your own, only to discover that the legal arena is a lot more complex and involved than you expected. Every attorney at Quinn Law and Mediation LLC in Mount Vernon has at least 15 years of experience, providing a variety of legal services to the entire Vine listening area. They are committed to helping clients find practical solutions to current legal problems. You can reach them at 242-9580 or visit their website at mountvernonlawyer.us. Dean and Kathy Taylor of Lang Taylor Home Furnishings are happy to be a supporter of 90.9 The Vine. With over 90 years of serving Southern Illinois, they specialize in superior customer service, friendly smiles, and quality furniture such as Simply Amish, Best Home Furnishings, and Justice Furniture. Their slogan at Lang Taylor is, it's cheaper in the country. They are located in Bonnie at 105 West 3rd Street, and their phone number is 242-3929. Find them on Facebook for more information and their hours of operation. And welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio. And also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites, live video streaming at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Ellsman. Danny, we're still uh, <laughs> we're still cracking up and laughing at uh, <laughs> the comment from Coach Phil Lieb of the Florida Wolves in this game last night. He said he got only his fifth technical in 17 years. And uh, he's never sworn at an official before, and he says he's not going to. But last night he got popped for saying, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Coach Bradley? What do you think, Coach Bradley? That, 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 is, that, that is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, have to put, you'll have to put that in your repertoire. <laughs> you know, I have to remember that one. Just like yeah. yeah. See, see if you get popped for saying you're amazing. <laughs> Oh, my goodness sakes. That's a funny one. It really is. Uh, Josh Bradley, coach of the Eldorado Eagles, joins us right now. A hard-fought battle last night for your Eagles over the Hamilton County Foxes. 
Uh, 41 to 34, is that what it was? 33. 33, yeah, eight-point win. So uh, uh, your thoughts on the game last night, Josh? Uh, just typical El Dorado, McLeansboro battle. You know, so we, we talk to our kids when you go there. No matter if McLeansboro's their team, El Dorado's their team, when El Dorado and McLeansboro play, you kind of throw the records out. You know you're going to get the other team's best effort. And, uh, you know, that's what we got. McLeansboro played hard, played pretty good defense. Uh, we had a lot of shots that I mean, we just didn't capitalize on, and, and we're lucky to get out of there with a win. Yeah, you know, Josh, uh, your team didn't shoot the free throw line very well last night. Uh, uh, Braden Atterbury was pretty quiet last night, and that's pretty unusual for him. Yeah, you know, we talked about that on the, on the way home with our staff. That you know, you go along the road and Braden has five points, and you and you get it out of there with a win. You know, you got to you just got to be happy that that you were able to do that. You know, we we just didn't shoot the ball well from the field at all told our kids after the game I wasn't disappointed in the effort or thought we played bad we got every shot we wanted in our offenses we got it inside we got the mid-range shot we just didn't make anything you know and then some nights that happens some nights you have games like that and that's what a lot of coaches call just winning ugly you know said I'd rather win win ugly is lose pretty and uh, last night was one of those games for your El Dorado Eagles uh, I thought the Foxes battled you you have them outmanned at every position there's no question about it. Anybody that knows basketball knows the El Dorado Eagles had the Foxes outmanned at every position last night. And the Foxes played hard. They gave you their best effort. It wasn't good enough last night. But your team is a uh, seventh-ranked team in 2A now. So, you know, you're not there by being slouches. No, you know, <laughs> we're going to get that. Every night you play, you got a target on your back. And like I said, when it's, when it's El Dorado, I'm playing for it, it's even something added a little bit more. You know, when the other team – is maybe struggling a little bit. You kind of make a season if you if you upset El Dorado or you know if El Dorado upsets McLeansboro. You know some of that other stuff kind of erases and goes away. And then we got that effort last night from McLeansboro too. We were going through. So to be able to not play real well, not shoot the ball well, and come out of there with a win, you know, anytime you can win at McLeansboro from El Dorado, it's a good thing. Well, a uh, young man had a great game for you last night, Ray May off the, off your bench. Uh, He's, he's just a player. If I'm picking a team, he can play on my team because he does a lot of things for your team that goes unnoticed. Uh, last night on defense, I made the comment during the game, you can go back, somebody wants to hear it or see it, they can go back and check it out. I said if he can't get his hand on it, he's trying to get his foot on it. I mean, he's yeah. just uh, – he plays defense hard. He hit a couple big three balls for you. He finished with uh, – 12 points on the night, I think, last night. So, uh, had a nice game for you. Yeah, he, he, came a long, he came a long way. You know, he's a kid that spends a lot of time getting give away from practice. He's constantly working on a shot or, hey, coach, you know, what, what can we do? And we're like, shoot 100 three-pointers every day. Do this, do that, and, and that kid will do it. And he, and he loves playing defense. He's long. He's lanky. I bet he's kicked you know, about 100 balls this season. Uh, he gets his, Like you said, if he doesn't tip it with his finger, he's kicking it out of bounds. He's doing something. You know, he's just one of those kids that just loves the game of basketball. And it's nice to see, you know, some of the work that he's put in be rewarded here for him down the stretch. Oh, yeah. And you have to be excited because uh, he gives you just that presence off the bench, uh, gives you a change of pace. But that uh, uh, all that trap defense you were playing there last night with him and uh, Partridge up on the front of that, uh, that's yeah. a big advantage for your El Dorado team, just the size and the length of those two guys right there. Yeah, you know, you got two athletic guys. Both of them are both of them long, leap really well. And, and you know, when you play a team a little bit undersized, those those two do a good job causing a lot of teams problems out front. We force teams to have to throw the ball high up in the air. It's a pretty uncomfortable situation, and, and those and those two are the key in that defense. We'll talk about your upcoming schedule now. We're uh, headed for this postseason run, you know, uh, the aspirations are building down there in El Dorado, uh, this seventh rank now in 2A. Uh, talk a little bit about what you got coming up here. Yeah, you know, we, we were off again. You know, we don't we didn't play until Friday night against, against Hamco. Now we're, we don't play again until next Friday at Fairfield. Uh, so, we, you know, we got a little bit of a layoff here, take the weekend off to kind of let our kids rest, and uh, we get a chance to uh, go on the road and try to get one back against the team that, that got us here at home by one point. And then uh, we play a tough Carmine team at home on Tuesday. So, we, you know, the conference title still uh, up for grabs. You know, something our kids can stay focused on, you know, coming here down down the stretch, try to get ourselves ready for regional time. Uh, you come out of that mid-winter classic over there at West Frankfurt. Uh, you finished second. Uh, you got defeated by a good Marion team. Talk a little bit about that tournament. 
yeah, you know, we, we played play pretty well over there. You know, the, the beat Carterville, the beat West Frankfurt, playing much better better at home, and a good Christopher team. You know, we, we came up a little bit short against against Marion, but I thought our kids played played really hard. And, and in that loss, I think we're going to learn a lot, you know, from, from that loss. You know, an opportunity to get beat by three against a good Marion team like that with, with some athletes and depth. They really pushed us to do some things. So I think in the, in the long run, even though we lost and you, and you want to win every game, that, that loss, over there playing that competition should help us come regional time. Well, you know, Coach, when you have the success your team's having right now, sometimes there's never a good loss. You don't want to say it's a good loss because you hate to lose. Yeah. But sometimes a loss like that shows your kids, hey, maybe we're not quite as good as we think we are, and it kind of keep, helps keep them grounded, doesn't it? It, it does. You know, it, it gives you a chance to kind of refocus that maybe when we're talking a little bit here in practice, you know, about, about a few little things we're not we're not happy with. They kind of say, oh, okay, maybe, maybe this is why we're talking about that a little bit. You know, so so why, like you said, any loss isn't necessarily a good loss if you want to win them all. You know, sometimes getting lost like that early here coming down the stretch for the regional it isn't necessarily a bad thing to kind of refocus the team. Well, in that, in that loss against Marion, uh, was it the Shadowins kid that uh, that got you, or what was it there? No, no. You know, we did a really good – Shadowins only had eight points. Oh, you wow. Know, we, kind of like what we did with the Carpenter kid from Mount Carmel. You know, he only had eight. We did a really good job. On him, the uh, the big freshman for uh, for Marion, the Connor kid. I think he led the he led their scoring with with fourteen. It, it was really their depth. We got in early foul trouble, kind of dug ourselves a little bit of a hole. Uh, I think we were down fourteen points with like three and a half four minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, and uh, we had a, Atterbury had a shot at the buzzer that just kind of hit the hit the front of the rim to tie it to send it to overtime. So we, you know, it, it was just kind of a nip tuck back and forth basketball game. Our defense played really really well. And we did. We had some opportunities and just came up a little short. Well, uh, we haven't talked to you since you got that big win up there at Mount Carmel. Talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, that that, that was that's a tough, you know, tough place to play. The atmosphere up there was neat, and, and you know, the, the Marcotti and Carpenter, they, they Ryger, they a really good basketball team. I thought, you know, for our kids to go up there and respond in that kind of atmosphere, we weren't, we wasn't sure if we, we were ready for that yet as a basketball team and the staff and. But their kids go up there and kind of respond the way we did. And, and you know, Partridge really rose up to a couple of big shots for us down the stretch. And Atterbury didn't play maybe his best game. But, but Ray May off the bench, I think he, he scored like eight straight points for us in the second quarter when, when we really needed some momentum. So it just it was an all-around good team team win. And anytime you can beat a team like Mount Carmel at their place, you know, at the quality win. Oh, yeah, Coach. You know, uh, any victory is a good victory, but some of them are a little more special, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. You know, when you know, you know what kind of teams are around the state and what everybody's kind of talking about teams. And, you know, that the, when you play a team like Mount Carmel, that everybody's kind of protecting. They, they may be the team to represent. So I don't know at the state tournament. So to, to go there and knock them off at their place, you know, means means a little bit more maybe than than just beating somebody else. Well, I know, I know, coaches don't like to do this, but looking a little forward ahead to regional, where does it look like your El Dorado Eagles may be headed? Well, you know, we're going to, we, we know we host it, so we know we're going to be at home. You know, uh, we, we got a tough matchup at Fairfield and with Carmike coming in at home. But, you know, we hopefully, if we, if we take care of business, you know, we, we should be a top one or two seed with, with Mount Carmel there. So, you know, we, we should have a pretty good chance. You know, if we, if we just play basketball, we're going to have our best chance to, uh, to maybe get to a regional championship game and give ourselves an opportunity. And, you know, that, that's the one thing we're staying focused on right now is, you know, just keep, Keep putting your nose to the grind, so come to work every day. Because ultimately, at the end, it, it, it's what you do in regional time that really matters. Why everything we've done's been nice, and and some of the tournament wins and our record and the ranking, you know, all that goes away if you get beat in the first game of the regional. So we, we you know, we're trying to stay focused on on doing what we do, try to get a little sharper on the offensive end, so we give ourselves a chance to win a regional here at El Dorado. So uh, you are going to get to host a regional there at El Dorado this time. Uh, who's some of the teams you think will be feeding into that? Well, we we know uh, we know uh, Flores hosting the the other one. Uh, looks like you know maybe if the rankings come out, Harrisburg, uh, West Frankfort, possibly Carmi, Edwards County, that down this way with with maybe Johnson City, looking maybe maybe Mount Carmel, Fairfield, kind of feeding in more a little bit more towards towards Flora in, in our in our subsectional. So it's good. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tough one. We 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 played everybody other than Flora and Harrisburg that's in our subsectional, so we've got a pretty good look at everybody. So it, it's not going to be an easy regional either way you go. Is it, you're going to have to play somebody pretty good, and you know whoever comes out of it's going to play good basketball. 
Well, Coach, we appreciate your time here this morning. Uh, best of luck throughout the season, and we'll be talking some more down the line. And uh, enjoy a little time off here and get revived for this final push. We hope so. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. All right, Josh. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Josh Bradley, head coach of the El Dorado Eagles. And, uh, yeah, he might he might use that. You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he might try that. That's a good quote. I like that. <laughs> oh, boy, that made our day. It sure did. That's a funny one from Coach Phil Lee. But, uh, yeah, El Dorado and uh, Coach Bradley off until uh, their next game against Fairfield. So they'll be able to really, really spend time focusing on what they need to do to um, have a better effort against the Mules, the Fairfield team, the only team to, to get them, uh, other than Marion, who got them at the tournament down at West Frankfurt. But, uh, you know, that Marion bunch, um, they're 3A and playing in that South 7 Conference. They're, uh, they're a tough basketball team, and that uh, was probably a really interesting game against El Dorado. But it sounded like they did a good job against Shadowlands. Yeah, you know, so uh, they've played some great competition here lately. Yeah, they have. Hey, we're out of time, Daddy. Uh, anything else we need to add before we go? Yeah, uh, Lady Foxes will be hosting the West Frankfurt Red, Lady Redbirds this afternoon. Tip time will probably be around 2 o'clock. We'll be there to bring that game today. Okay, great. That's on foxesfans.net. Also, for you New Hope fans and New Hope girls, New Hope Lady Panthers will be in the state uh, championship game this afternoon at uh, Ren Lake College in uh, Class S Junior High Girls Basketball. And, again, the Fairfield Colts will play for a regional championship at home at Center Street School this coming Monday night against NCOE. So we wish them luck. So A lot uh, of good basketball. And, again, you can check out scores and all that on our sports website at areasports.net. That's uh, going to wrap it up. Again, we'll be back here next Saturday morning at 830. It's 90 minutes of great local sports talk. It's the Sports Couch. Have a good weekend, everyone. So long. <laughs>